Okay, soft on drugs or harm minimisation? Take your pick. That is the debate raging now over Queensland's Labor government's decision to unveil a pill testing regime. This move comes just days after the relaxed laws regarding possession of heroin, of ice and cocaine. That illicit drug offences are clogging up our courts and our prison systems is a matter of record, but I've got a question. Are these latest moves the right way forward? Well, joining me now to discuss this issue is Victorian Liberal Democrat MP David Limbrick. David, it's always wonderful to have you on the show, particularly because you're fearless in wading into these topics, and I, I'm never quite sure whether I'm going to agree with you or not. But I'm going to say this is sending the wrong message to young people. What's your response to that? I don't think it's sending the wrong message at all, Corey. Um, you have to think about, like, I, I'm, a, I'm a parent, Corey, and um, my young boys are quickly growing up to be young adults. And like, like most parents, um, I don't want my kids to take drugs. I, I hope that they won't make those choices. But, you know, for those of us that, you know, that acknowledge that we live in a free society, um, we have to acknowledge that people might make choices that we don't agree with. Now, if they do choose to take drugs, uh, like a pill, um, I would much rather them have access to be able to test it than not. And I think that's the clear question here is, um, if there is a way for people to um, minimise the harm of drugs, then uh, I'm, I'm supportive of it. And look, I, as far as our funding and this sort of thing is concerned, I actually think it'll save taxpayers money, uh, money because, um, you know, just think about the cost just in one single case of acquired brain injury from drug overdose. That's a lifetime of care, depending on the severity, but it could be a lifetime of care and uh, a lifetime of welfare for the unfortunate person that was uh, injured. So um, I don't, I don't okay. think that this is going to be okay, a big okay. expense either. Right, yeah, David. Let's, you've made the case on pills there, which are used often at uh, music festivals and the like. But what about testing other drugs then? Heroin for purity or cocaine for purity or, or crystal meth? Do you think the government should be funding programs in this space as well? Look, whether or not the government funds it is a separate question to whether it's legal. I would prefer um, community and non-government organisations to pay for it, or maybe even the event organisers themselves to pay for it. But regardless, I think it should be legal for people that want to do this to do it. Um, uh, you know, if, if there are um, dangerous drugs, I mean, they're already dangerous, if they're dangerous because they've been adulterated or, or got other substances mixed in with it, then it not only benefits the person taking that drug, it also allows them to collect that information and send out alerts so that people know about it. It will undoubtedly save lives. Now, here's the conundrum, or one of the conundrums. It was only a few weeks ago, I think, that MDMA, which is, I think, known as ecstasy on the screen, or as a precursor for it, MDMA was legalised uh, under prescription for some mental health issues under care of a psychiatrist, which does suggest that it has some application in a pure form. But it's a long bow then to say, well, if we can ensure the purity of it, it's OK out there on the street. I, I just don't see how the two are, can really marry together because uh, you'll still have people dying of drug overdoses. Look, my understanding is the pill testing services don't say that drugs are safe. What they do is they provide better market information to the consumers of these substances. Um, I, I don't think anyone's saying that even pure MDMA is safe. It still has uh, se very serious risks that people need to take into consideration. Um, the fact that it's been approved for therapeutic use, I mean, there's, there's lots of dangerous drugs that are approved for therapeutic use. That doesn't mean that they, you know, people should go out and take them willy-nilly. Uh, MDMA... Uh, is also dangerous, but it's more dangerous when it's mixed with other substances. But, you know, testing it and providing information on what's actually in it, uh, I don't think is condoning it. In fact, I think that this idea that, you know, everything that we don't like or everything that the government allows is somehow condoning it, I think that this is like, you know, th we've sort of fallen into this leftist trap of trying to outlaw everything that we don't like. In a free society, you have to understand that people will make decisions that you don't approve of and um, they must be allowed to uh, have the freedom to try and get as much information as they can to make that decision the most responsible possible. And if they're, if they're able to get more information about that, these products... Uh, yeah. On that, we agree, because people should be free to make decisions for themselves. I just think they've got to wear the consequences of those decisions without the public picking up the tab. And we might have another further discussion on that at another time. David Limbrick, 
always love your work because you are a fighter for freedom and it's great to have you on, Bernardi. Thanks very much for joining me tonight.